Welcome to Unleash the Awesome with Dave Gambrill. All of us have unique skills, talents, and abilities that aren't being used to their full potential. Our mission is to share the people, tools, apps, and other resources that will help you unleash your awesome on the world. Yo, what's up? It's Dave. Welcome to another episode of Unleash the Awesome. And today I am so thrilled to have a special guest. Well, I guess I'm kind of the guest, but my buddy Matt McWilliams of the Affiliate Guy podcast, who is the smartest guy I know as it relates to all things affiliate marketing. If you want to learn about how to get started and how to flourish in affiliate marketing, then you should right now, because you're probably listening to this on a podcast app, you can still listen to this episode. But go on over and search for the Affiliate Guy podcast and subscribe because he focuses on how to really be successful with affiliate marketing. So I had a chance to meet Matt uh, through some of the other stuff that I do, and I've become really good friends with him. He sent me a text earlier today and said, dude, did you know that the interview that you did on my podcast like nine months ago is the most popular episode and continues to be that? And I was like, no, that's pretty interesting, but thank you for letting me know. And then because we both work from a place of abundance and possibility, I said, hey, would it be cool if I took that episode and used it on my podcast as an episode? Because my audience loves to hear this stuff and then they can get kind of your perspective on things as well. And he's like, no, that's great. So within about five minutes, we worked it all out. He sent me the episode, sent me a little intro and here we go. And so I wanted to share that with you because one of the things you'll find in this space is people who operate from a place of hyper competitiveness and trying to protect all their stuff in a scarcity mindset, they typically don't do very well in the online space. Uh, But those who are willing to act out of a place of abundance and partnering and collaborating and sharing each other's wisdom, things like that, that's when you tend to be really successful. So I knew that that's how Matt operated. So I knew when I asked him, it would probably be yes. And that's how I operate. And so that's how you're getting to listen to this interview that Matt did with me on the Affiliate Guide podcast about nine months ago. So if you want to figure out how I got started with affiliate marketing without it letting, uh, getting in the way of what I do in my business and how I've leveraged that to power my business, then you're going to want to listen to this episode I did with Matt. So without further ado, let me turn it over to my buddy, Matt McWilliams. Hey, this is Matt McWilliams from the Affiliate Guy podcast, and what you are about to listen to is our most popular episode ever, and it's with your boy, Dave Gambrell. Now, when I say most popular episode ever, I just published episode number 347, and this episode has almost 20,000 downloads. In fact, by the time you listen to this, it probably will hit 20,000 downloads. It's from nine months ago, and it's getting more than 50 downloads a day on average right now, nine months later. That is amazing. Like if you know podcasting, you know how just how amazing it is. This was one of my favorite interviews that I've ever done. Uh, No offense to my past guests, but Dave absolutely rocked the house. He shared all of his best affiliate marketing tips. I mean, just so much value. So buckle up, take some good notes, and learn from the master. Hey, everyone. What's up? Well, welcome. Guys, I have an amazing treat for you guys today. I was just sharing with our start mastermind. We just finished up a meeting like two minutes ago and uh, had an epic meeting with our our mastermind group today. Love those guys. And I was sharing with them, if you ever want to like come see somebody that's taken what we teach and then like just throwing gasoline on it and really kind of put it on steroids. Uh, This is the guy today, Dave Gambrill. And I know he'll, he'll say things like, I I have a feeling, you know, maybe it's just my ego speaking, but I have a feeling he'd be like, well, you know, I I learned a lot from you, Matt, and you taught me a lot. But the truth is like he, we have a lot of people who've learned a lot from us. And that's why we want to share stories like this guy's like, he took it and he ran with it. Uh, Speaking of our mastermind, one of the guys in, in our group, I won't mention who, because what what happens in start stays in start. But he said a couple a couple of weeks ago he said, "You and I, me, me and, and him, we read the same book seven years ago, Michael Hyatt's platform." And he said, "I'm still working a full time job, and Matt, you've got a successful online business." So sometimes mm-hmm. we hear things, we get that information, we don't put it into practice. Dave is putting this stuff into practice, and he's doing stuff like I learned from him. 
I'll just put it that way. So I'm going to stop talking about them. I'm just going to welcome them. I, I just, I'm so excited to, to share this with you guys today. So Dave, welcome, man. What's up, fellas? I'm so glad to be here, man. When I got the invite, I'm like, you know what? Of all the things I could possibly do hanging out with you guys would be the coolest because we all speak the same language at language and we're doing similar things. So hopefully we can add a tremendous amount of value to your audience today. Mark actually speaks um, Washingtonian. So uh, it's a little bit different. He says words kind of funny. And I'm from the South. So um, both. Yeah, both. That's Matt's favorite. Um, both. Both. Um, my, mine is all y'all. All y'all. Um, I did. I had a friend of mine say the other day, he like he's revoking my uh, my Southerner card because I said um, I said you all. I don't know where that came from. Like, mm. what is wrong with me? Who says that? Right? But I did. <laughs> so got my Southern card revoked by from my friend Hunter. So Dave, uh, quick, I mean, just quickly, I'm opening a question here, but tell us a little bit about yourself, kind of what you've done, because you don't. I, I want to make clear, guys. Like Dave is not an affiliate marketer. Okay, he's not you know, just building a business, doing affiliate marketing. He's got a ton of stuff going on. He's got a really cool background. So tell us a little bit about yourself, how you got into the online business and, and what you're doing these days. Okay, cool. So I won't go all the way back to the very beginning, back in 1972. But you won a swimming contest, right? Yes, I did. I won first, <laughs> first prize. Um, but I started this online thing back in 1992, 93, somewhere in there. I'm not exactly sure what year it was, but somewhere in there was I was um, selling stuff on eBay. So I first started getting the bug of like how you could actually sell things online all the way back then. So I know some people that are watching right now weren't even born, which makes me feel super old. But um, <laughs> I've been in the space for a while and, and I've been preaching ever since then about building your email list, building your following, building a tribe, all that stuff. But all the while I was still working a full-time job. This was a kind of a side hustle. And, you know, I was selling drugs at the back of my car for a pharmaceutical company. <laughs> uh, and I was like, wait a minute. I didn't know this part of the story. So there's, there's, there's a good one. And then, uh, and doing really well with that. I mean, that was one of those things where like, you know, six figures, a bonus, a company car, a pension, all that stuff. So like super comfortable, living a great life, you know, having a family, you know, having three boys. They're all growing very quickly. Got two in college, one in high school. But all the all the while, right? So you have a mortgage, you have mouths to feed, you have um, you know all this other stuff that you have to take care of. So still working a full time job, but building the side hustle on it, never going away. It's always over here, just doing its thing, doing its thing, and growing my email list and doing some online things. And back in the day, I had some banner ads on my website through Link Exchange, which is not even a oh. thing anymore. Did so, you really? Yeah, yeah. So. Oh my gosh, I remember Link Exchange. It's like what 2000. I think they went around like 2006. Yeah, yeah. It was a while ago. And then I think Yahoo bought them or Microsoft. Yeah. But anyway, so been doing it for a really long time, but um, really started getting serious with this online thing probably seven or eight years ago. I went to Brendan Burchard's Experts Academy um, thing. And he was talking about monetizing your message and getting it online. And so I started doing, I also have a leadership training and consulting business. And that's, that started about the same time, about eight years ago. And so I, I quit my corporate job. I've been doing leadership training, consulting, coaching pretty much full time for the last eight years. But this affiliate thing started really picking up because I was figuring out, because I had been doing this online stuff for a really long time and I was, it wasn't new to me. The concept wasn't new to me. Um, I, I picked it up really quickly when I decided I needed to get my leadership business online because I started executing on all the things that we teach and we talk about. And other people, other leadership trainers, coaches, consultants were like, how are you doing that? Like, how are you getting online? How are you getting your courses online? How, how are you getting other people to sell your stuff? Like, this is mind blowing. What is this stuff? And so that's where my digital marketing mentorship Facebook group kind of started because I was answering these questions kind of one off. And then it was like, I was getting the same question multiple times a day. And then I was getting multiple questions multiple times a day. So I was like, why don't I build a tribe or an audience and serve these people and answer all of these questions. And so that's kind of where we are today. I have just over 2000 people in that group. And I, every single day go live in there and teach them stuff about basically building their on ramp to the digital marketing success, super highway. And the way the affiliate stuff works in is I give them the beginner steps. I teach them the basics, the, the strategies, the things they need to think about, and we'll get them started. But then some of them need to know how to launch a product. And so I send them to one of our friends, Jeff Walker. Yeah. Some of them need to know how to do affiliate marketing. I send them your way. So, you know, some of them need to learn how to have a really cool experience uh, for their customers and their clients. So I send them to Marisa Margaret. So I've built all these relationships in the industry 
and I know exactly where my niche is. I know exactly who I'm serving, where I'm serving them. And then when there's any adjacent things that I think can help them that I might also have an affiliate relationship with, that's where I point people to. Hmm. All right, guys, there's so much we could unpack just from like, just from Dave introducing himself. Um, <laughs> I mean, this is so guys, this is so awesome. So here's all I want to, I mean, first of all, welcome. We, I, Tim Kirk, Phil Card, uh, gosh, we got like a bunch of our start mastermind people on here. Kurt Grella, Glenn Marasco, Mark Williams. I saw, uh, let's see who I can't get this name to show up. It's Brittany and, uh, and Steve Blunt guys, you are, you're amazing. I know I see a bunch of others on there. Uh, Michael Gurley, another one of our start mastermind people. So real quick guys, I just want to say, cause you're going to get so much out of this. Do yourself a favor, do your friends a favor. You got just a few minutes here, like the next couple of minutes, cause then they're going to miss out if they come to it. Share this with your friends. Um, just drop a quick uh, a note and just share this with friends. Tell them like they need to come learn from Dave. Ask a bunch of questions in the chat. I've got some questions I want to ask Dave, but I would love to not have to use a single one of them today. That would be like, uh, we'll start off with one of mine, but I would love to not use another one because you guys are asking so many amazing questions. And when Dave is saying something that's resonating with you, just like give me an amen in the comments, um, a heck yeah, give them some love, a like, a heart, whatever. Um, if on the off chance Mark says something funny, you can uh, <laughs> uh, you, can, you can drop a wow. smiley face, you know, reaction. No, I'm just kidding. Mark will probably say something funny. And then just one other quick uh, housekeeping item. Our next Facebook Live, we talk about great stories. I talked to this guy last week, a uh, good friend of mine from down in Indianapolis, Mike Berry. He's helping families with adoption and like the, the issues that sometimes they have to deal with. Like, amazing guy. But he said some stuff on this call. He and I had a really kind of a heart-to-heart -heart call, just kind of very vulnerable, open and honest with the other, some of the struggles we're having in our business. And as he was talking about his journey, I was like, dude, can you come share that with my audience? And he graciously said he would. So next Tuesday, September 10th, at either 3 or 3.30, this is actually even news to Mark because I uh, might have yeah. some four that day. Um, and so I'm asking him to possibly move it to three. So just here's what you do. Go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash FB chat. You can get signed up to be notified when we're going to go live. So it's either going to be 3 or 3.30 next Tuesday. And he's uh, just another amazing, amazing person. So, Here's my question for you, Dave, to start us off. Um, promoting affiliate offers. I know you've seen a lot of benefits uh, for you. You've seen a lot of benefits for your business. You've seen a lot of your benefits for your audience. What have been some of the biggest uh, benefits that you've seen from that? I think the biggest benefit is that when you do this right and you find these adjacent things that serve your audience, there, there's only so far that you can or should be going with your audience on teaching certain things. So I get to a point where I'm like, all right, I'm not gonna teach any more of this because I would be foolish to try to teach product launches because Jeff Walker does that better than just about anybody mm -hmm. I know. So let me introduce people to Jeff. So I think for me, the biggest benefit I've seen is when people get that next piece of the puzzle because we all know that building this thing online is like building a puzzle. And I always use the analogy of, finding those four corner pieces. And those could be different for you depending on your expertise and your background and your, your knowledge. And so maybe you have one or two of the pieces and I love it when I share with somebody, maybe I teach them the third piece and then I share with them somebody from an affiliate offer that makes that fourth corner of the puzzle. And then you know, once you get the four corners, then the other edge pieces start to line up and then you can fill in the pieces inside almost automatically. So for me, the biggest benefit is seeing the success people are having. Like I was just at an event. Um, you and I both know Sue McLaren. And, uh, Did you go to Tribe Live? Yeah, I was just at Tribe Live this weekend. And I had a woman come up to me, tears in her eyes, hugging me, saying, I'm so glad you introduced me to Stu and Tribe. And I was like, whoa, that's pretty cool. Um, Isn't so the best? Yeah. So when you have stuff like that, right? And, and Stu teaches stuff that I could never – teach at that level and and yes i know some of that stuff but like i would never try because he's the guy in the membership and recurring revenue space so um i think for me it's just the results that i see people get um from the recommendations that i make and if anybody thinks it's about all about the money i mean we we talk a lot about it helps you make your first dollar online it helps you to monetize when you don't have anything to sell and to learn about your audience and all that stuff you know what we teach but um it's not all about the money. And I think the best example of that from my own experience is I had somebody recently offer me an astronomical amount of money to coach them through a membership site. And I said, no, 
I said, you can go spend a fraction of that. And yeah, I made 800 bucks in in an affiliate commission when they bought, you know, tribe from Stu. But I turned down a lot more than that because I, I'm not the expert on that. And I said, you're going to get more. My job is to serve you. You're going to get more from purchasing Stu's course than you are from spending, you know, thousands of dollars with me coaching. Um, and that's, that's really what the essence of, of affiliate marketing is. That's what I love about it. So. Yeah. When, when you do it right and when you do it like guys like us do it, yeah, that's it. It's the people that are in us to make the quick buck and they just want to, you know, they think it's a sprint, not a marathon. Yeah, you'll make your dollar, you'll make your $10, you might make $100, but you will flame out very quickly. Those of us that understand that this is a marathon and play the long game, then I think that's why guys like you and I continue to have success in this. Yeah. Um, got some great questions coming in, Dave. So I'm going to go with, uh, let's see, let me grab Phil's here. Phil's one of our, uh, oh my gosh, Phil's actually just, Phil's just one of my favorite people. Um, but he's in our start mastermind. So Phil asked, David, sounds like you're working with a lot of big names and, and would like more detail around what I believe you said you would guide them. Phil, I'm, whoa. Um, okay, sorry. I'm going to pick on Phil. I'm confused about this question. All right, here we he go. He says my question is at the end. So yeah, there we go. So yeah, he works <laughs> big names. He does. He says, see, he doesn't do, no, he did do like Gwen. He put question in all caps. Again. See, Gwen, you're conditioning my audience. We talked about this a lot. You're conditioning my audience to put question in all caps at the beginning. I love that. Thank you, Gwen. Is this done through tagging your list by putting them in buckets or how do you approach, approach when to promote them? So Mark, can you, I'm not picking up what he's asking there, but maybe you guys are, sorry. My brain's operating at like 80% today. I don't know what it is, um, but it's like I'm missing that 20%. I, I think he, I think I get the essence of the question. Okay, I think great. what he's saying is, how do I know what to recommend at what time, right? So how do I, Okay, How do I know? Um, some of it is when you go opt in to my list to my number one opt in piece, I have questions right there, just little radio buttons you click. And I say, you know, which of the following things do you care to know about? Yeah. And you can click on podcasting, affiliate opportunities, blogging, you know, building your email list, uh, membership groups, whatever. So, yes, I do tag my audience. But I also know that sometimes people don't know what they don't know, and they, they don't know what they're ready for yet. And so in a lot of these big uh, affiliate launches that we've been talking about, some of these bigger names, they happen every year at a certain time. And so sometimes what I'll do is I'll pre-frame even the pre-launch content a week or two ahead of time mm-hmm. with my audience and start talking about some things that might, might just magically pop up during this launch window. Uh, and we'll talk about that. We'll start having conversations about that. I'll start doing Facebook lives about that. So I'll start priming my audience to want some more information about this stuff. And then just miraculously, this stuff starts happening because I know the date that their pre-launch content is going to happen. So sometimes I back up a couple weeks in front of that and start talking about it. So like I'm talking about a big launch that's happening uh, in September with a lot of my audience now. I'm starting to plant the seeds, talk about it, talk, See about, that. <laughs> talk about some of the... Um, you know, there's logical buyers in this process and emotional buyers in, in these things. The emotional buyers will buy as soon as card opens, but the logical buyers take a really long time. And so what I try to do is start talking about some of the things I think will be buying objections. And we get those conversations going early so that when the opportunity comes, then they see it and they're like, oh, Dave's already answered this question. Or the person that's offering this thing has already answered that question through one of the bonuses or something. So um Yes, I can target people based on tags and timing. So if it's not one of these things that launches on a on a cycle, if it's like an evergreen thing like Kajabi or ClickFunnels or some of these tools that I use, um, yes, I tag people that way. But also, I kind of pre-frame the conversations for these bigger launches. Yeah. So guys, here's what I want you to do, because Dave just mentioned he he's promoting something that's coming up in exactly let's see what the date is exactly seven days. Uh, we're we're both promoting it. And he's warming up his audience. So, Mark, can you drop the link to Dave's Facebook page? I want all of you to go like and follow and do do this important thing. You should do this with our page, too. Make sure you go change your notification settings. I'm not saying you have to see all of Dave's notifications for the next five years, although you'll probably love to. But at least for the next, like, four weeks, I just want you to go watch what Dave does with this promotion. 
I want, I want to talk to him in a little bit about how he uses Facebook lives. If, if we have him, unless you got, again, if you're, if you're just here, I know we saw Yvonne and, and Skip and some others come on. Um, make sure you ask those questions because I want to get your questions in more than I want to get mine in. But if we do have time, we'll talk about how you're using Facebook lives, but go follow Dave and get all of his notifications for the next few weeks and see what he's doing right now and take screenshots, save them to your swipe file. Like I know he would love it. You know, the sincerest form of flattery is to copy Dave. So copy him and, and, and tweak what he's doing. Cause it's just amazing stuff guys. So Mark's going to drop that link in the chat and you guys can make sure you like Dave and uh, love him and all that stuff and, and follow Easter. Cause it's just so flipping awesome. Thanks for that, Matt. And can I can I stop you there before we get to yeah. another question? Absolutely. I want I want to highlight for everybody what we're doing right now, which is not to pat either of us on the back, but I want people to understand what's going on here. You just said something where Dave and I are promoting the same thing coming up, right? And then you're like, go follow Dave's Facebook or whatever. Because you and I operate out of abundance and we oh, understand yeah. that a rising tide lifts all boats and that partnering makes much more sense than trying to fight for scraps like jackals and hyenas, right? Because we operate in this space, like a lot of people, if you'd put an invite out and said, hey, come on, you're you're super successful right now. Come on my thing and, and spill all your secrets. A lot of people who operate from scarcity would be like, dude, I'm not doing that. We're, we got this launch coming up. And no, I'm not, no, I'm never gonna do that. But because of guys like you, me, and, and a lot of people in this space, uh, which is really refreshing to me, operate out of this place of abundance where everybody's like, listen, there's plenty to go around Let's just partner and and raise the noise level overall on this thing to a whole nother level. Then we're gonna get ours instead of worrying about the the one you know slice of the pie you're gonna get and then fighting for a bigger bigger slice of the pie. Why don't we all operate to grow the pie bigger? And even if you got that same slice, just by nature of the pie getting bigger, you get a bigger slice. So I just want to thank you for your abundance mindset and operating that way because a lot of people don't do that. Yeah. Oh, Patrick, I cannot wait to answer your question if we have time. Um, the short answer is no. Okay, dude, that, I mean, you are so spot on. The reason why I say that to go follow to go follow David is because you're going to learn from him. And, and he's doing it. everything that we teach. He's doing it in some form. It's just sometimes he adds his own. Like there are things that we don't specifically teach that specific tactic, but it comes from the principles that we're, you know, we're teaching. And whether he learned it from me or not, it doesn't matter. Um, but yeah, I mean, the, the reality is I know full well when I said I didn't think of it consciously, but I know full well when I send people to you, um, it's it's I'm not losing sales. I'm just making the pie bigger. And um, yeah, I mean, hook me up with a smaller piece of a bigger pie because that's, uh, that's that's just how that's how I operate. And yeah. if you're not operating from that place. Um, you're missing out on on so much that just this this world, this business but also this, this life has to offer. And I'm not going to dive way in that because we got questions out the butt here. So, um, <laughs> all right. So real quick, but, but seriously operate for, we'll, we'll talk about this and we'll do a Facebook live or something operate from that place of abundance. There's more where it comes from. Um, there's, there's a lot more for both, you know, Dave and I to, to get out of this. And, and the more I can help him, uh, call it karma, whatever, doesn't matter. Um, I, I know it's I, I know intellectually it's going to come around. It's not why I do it though. But Dwayne asked for the first time ever for my first ever launch where I have a relatively small email list and want to ask several people with larger audience to be an affiliate for my offer. How do you phrase it? My first launch is for group coaching. So Dave, you know I know you haven't had a ton of experience with having your own affiliate partners, but you've been on the other side of being asked to to promote stuff and you've reached this point. You know, the great reason, the, the reason why I'm asking you this question is not just because Wayne asked it, but you've reached the point where you're getting asked to promote more things than you have the bandwidth to promote. You've reached that, that certain level of status, right? Mm -hmm. So if, if Gwen's going to come to you and say, Hey, would you promote this group coaching offer? Uh, what are the things you're looking for as, as a partner when, when maybe that person's got a smaller audience and they're a little bit new? That's a great question. So if you come to me and you've done your homework and you say, listen, I've looked at your audience. I know kind of who you serve. I think this is who you serve. And I think my thing is a good fit. And here's why I will continue to read your email. If, if we don't have that up front and in the first few sentences, there's a pretty good chance. Like you said, I, I'm getting so many requests anymore that I, I probably don't get past it, honestly. So if you've done your homework and that's, that's, I can see that up front. I'm like, okay, I'll listen. 
Um, and also if you're going to make it easy for me. So if you have swipe files, if you have images, if you have a mailing calendar already set up and you have the dates and everything else and you say, listen, you know, I think this is a good fit and I'm going to make it really easy for you, then we are 80% to yes already, right? Because I'm like, okay, cool. Really awesome. I, there's something that I'll be promoting starting tomorrow. It's a, it's a smaller thing. It's not one of these big, you know, launches I do every year. But I just got an email from that person a few hours ago. It was like, hey, quick reminder, promotion tomorrow. Here's everything you need. It's all laid out for you. So the easier you make it for me and the more compelling you make it uh, in terms of uh, how it's going to help my audience, then I'm much more likely to say yes. And even before that, um, I think if, if you've had a relationship and you've done a good job of just helping me serve my audience, then that almost becomes a no brainer. So that's, that's how I got to where I got with some of these other people in the space. I would be helping out with their launches, even if I wasn't an affiliate partner, I would be in the groups, helping answer questions and direct people to certain things, just serving, just, just serving and helping without expecting anything in return. And after a while, they're like, man, this guy has an audience and he really knows what's up. Like maybe we should ask him to promote our thing. So that, I think that would be the third element. Like if we've known each other for a while and you've been in my groups or you've been on my pages and you've been commenting and been really active, then it's almost a guaranteed yes for me at that point if, you, if we meet all three of those criteria. Well, it's name recognition. It's, it's why yard signs work in political campaigns. Yep. We don't check the box or push the button for somebody whose name we don't even recognize. Right. And so get in front of them. I mean, guys, I'm just going to say this. Um, we did a whole series recently. Mark can drop the link to it on how to find and recruit affiliates. I mean, it's like, Mark, what's your guess? Five hours plus of content? Mm -hmm. for free. Um, but in two minutes and 14 seconds, roughly, Dave just gave you the playbook, guys. Here's the beauty. I, I operate from a place of abundance, but I'm just going to be perfectly – I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to challenge you guys. Dave gave you the playbook. Show up on their, their Facebook page. Leave comments. Uh, don't like – who I don't whoever looks at who likes their post. I mean, like we don't. I don't. You leave a comment, I, I see it. I see it. All right. You leave a comment. I recognize your name. You join my mastermind. I, I spend every single week with you for an hour and I get to know you. Um, that's who we're going to promote. All right. That's who we're going to promote. He just gave you the playbook. So my challenge to you is, are you going to execute it? Mm. I, I actually know for a fact, sadly, 80% of you won't. I, I mean, I don't know how I'm, like, I'm going to just like, I'm being just blunt here. Um, but unfortunately that's just what the numbers tell me. He just gave you the playbook. He gave you what he told you what to write at the beginning of the email. He told you what to write in the second part of the email. When I know you're going to execute, cause I know you well enough, but I'm just challenging you. He just gave you the playbook in two minutes and 14 seconds. Yeah. And I guarantee you that's not, not just for me, like pretty much anybody else you promote. If you start your email with, hey, Matt, I've been following your stuff for a while. I really like your audience and the people that you serve. And the way I see it, it's this. And I have this thing coming out that I think is a great fit. And here's why. I'd love to, you know, chat with you more about promoting it. If you start with that, you, at least your email gets read. And that's half the battle. Yep. Gave yeah. you the play real quick. Can I, like we could can just I add one more thing to that? Message today, and we're done. Yeah. <laughs> one, one more thing I would add to that. And I think, Matt, you and Dave would agree, uh, is... If you email Dave or somebody and they say, hey, no, not right now, continue building that relationship. Because if you drop off right then, now Dave knows that all you wanted was him to promote. But yep. if you continue building that relationship and realize, I mean, Matt, that's one of the things we've realized. People's calendars are, are busy. It may have nothing to do with your offer. It may have nothing to do with you. They could just be busy and they could have a full calendar. So right, don't one, give up if they say, is, hey, not right now. Yeah. 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 You asked me to give up. put something in September, October, November, December, January, or February coming up, March. I can't do it. Not because I don't like you. You're the greatest offer in the world. And I'll tell you that. Maybe. We'll talk. And so I see it, Gwen. Gwen, I mean, because again, I know Gwen. She's in her start mastermind. Um, but I know you're going to take, like, I, I, there's something about the way Dave said it. That's why I asked that question. Is like, how would you want people to approach you, Dave? Sometimes you just have to hear it from another person. And I can tell you, you know, I can tell you, but the way that Dave said it just now was from that perspective. And so I know what Gwen's going to do. She's going to go put it into practice and we're going to be, you know, be sitting here on September 4th of 2020. And her question is going to be at a completely different level. 
because she's like, okay, now I've got some number of partners and I'm making some number of sales and you're going to rock it, Gwen. So I'm excited for you. Um, Patrick's question is very, I'm going to make this succinct. I'm, I'm almost 60 years. I'm almost 60 years young. That's right. Um, am I too late, too old and too late to the game? I, I could take that one, Dave, but you, you're the guest today. So I'm going to let you address that. No. <laughs> All right, cool. Next question. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, yeah. C carry on. Yeah, I mean, no. And the reason is this. And as much as you hear me talk about building your email list and doing, you know, I, my firm belief is your email list is critical. That's the thing you should be building. However, that's not to say you can't build a Facebook group relatively quickly and add a bunch of value to the people in that group. And I've seen people do this literally in days, like pop up. Facebook groups that get thousands of people in it because they're very focused on what they're teaching. So no, it's not too late because if you employ strategies like that and then you get people in there and you kind of get this feeding frenzy for whatever it is you're going to offer. Um, and yeah, you can transition them to your email list or make the offer right in that Facebook group, but no, it is not too late. If you employ the stuff that Matt teaches through his programs, that's no, not too late. And, and sadly to Matt's point before, um, all the information is out there. All the information to be successful is out there. It's just a matter of will you execute and will you continue to execute once you get punched in the face because you're going to get punched in the face on your journey. Are you going to get up and dust yourself off and continue to go? And that's how you be successful in this. Again, this if you play the long game, if you know this is a marathon, not a sprint, but you continue to execute, you'll have success. Yeah. I mean, Gwen just admitted her age. Um, for what it's worth, Gwen, I thought you were – significantly younger so we got you got that going for you um here's the thing you're like patrick i think you're like two three years older mark maybe you can correct me he's like two or three years older than our average average person in our audience we've surveyed yeah. it. it's like 56 and a half 57 yeah, yeah. um i mean it, it's called an encore career for a reason um i mean so like it, it, we consistently look at it it's like i'm in my mid 50s i'm in my early 60s i'm in my late 50s like over and over again People don't write to me saying, hey, I'm in my early 40s. I'm in my late 30s. Those are the people writing to us. Those are the people that are joining my audience. So my audience is, I mean, I'm 20 years younger than our average audience member, which is crazy. So, all right, I want to get to a few more questions before we wrap up here. Um, so I want to talk about social media. I want to talk about what you're doing. Um, I've got a couple of things. Mark, I don't know if you're able to share what um, – we talked about the warm up, and you guys will see this when you follow Dave. Make sure you click the link that Mark dropped earlier. Uh, you promoted our our No Product No Problem launch back in uh, May and June. You had a post in May, about two weeks prior. I, I didn't see it. I don't know how I didn't see it. Uh, probably because I don't Facebook, think you were on Facebook yet. Yeah, it was <laughs> Facebook doesn't show us everything. Um, I, I love this post, and I'm just going to read to you, Mark, if you're able to drop a link to it. If not, maybe you could, I don't know, we could figure out a way to share this with people. But I'm just going to read it. It, said, it was from you May 9th, so this is about three weeks before the launch. If you'd like to learn more about the power of affiliate marketing, let me know. I might have something for you in the next week or two. Uh, like, is that, some, is that something that you do? For, I know the answer to this, but is that something that you do frequently, and, and how has it worked for you, kind of that warm-up? phase there yeah so i do that a lot and um I, it comes right out of this book influence the psychology of persuasion by dr robert i do you not keep you? this book is very close to me at all times it's very beat up um the reason everybody's going to grab their copy. hang on there we go <laughs> come on <laughs> I, I mean i probably have an amazon affiliate link to it if we want to drop it no i'm just kidding but uh no it's one of those things where uh, social proof, right? That's one of the levers that Dr. Chile talks about, levers of influence that he talks about. And so one of the things I like to do is I like to put that question out there uh, about whatever it is. I did one today in my digital marketing Facebook group where I talked about product launches and the challenges that, uh, you know, what challenges do you have with product launches and some other things, which leads into something that's coming up in a couple of weeks. So the reason I do it is one, social proof, two, um, people will see that other people are having similar problems. And then three, I can usually swoop in and then 
answer some of the the questions or at least pre-frame what's coming man would you have to like go to the neighbor's house to get your copy that? <laughs> i can't find i did find one of my many other robert cialdini books though okay. but i can't find influence i feel like a terrible marketer a terrible person now, yeah you have to turn in your marketer card now since That's you right. can't find your copy hey, of influence. this one's good too <laughs> but yeah so it is i do it for social proof i also do it for authority which is another thing he talks about in here because what i start doing is start pre-framing the thing that's coming up as the person or the thing that will help solve this problem, right? So we start, I call it chumming the waters, right? We start chumming the waters, we get it going, we start having this conversation. People are talking about affiliate stuff and they're like, Dave, you're really good at affiliate stuff, blah, blah, blah. What can you tell me about affiliate stuff? And I start teaching them, blah, blah, blah. And then all of a sudden, miraculously, Matt has this thing pop up where, oh, he's going to teach people affiliate stuff. And look, he's got this launch and he's got these free videos. Maybe you should go check it out, right? So it's, it's really just helping pre-frame the conversation. And yes, I do it a lot. I do it via posts like that. And I try to get people to comment in there because you know that that helps, you know, that post stay up on Facebook for a longer period of time. Um, so yeah, but definitely for social proof and definitely for authority, which are two of the levers that Shalina talks about in his book. Yeah. Um, that book, I read it for the first time in 2009. Completely rocked my world. I mean, it's the foundation of, I, I was talking with somebody today, we were, we were talking about uh, Brian Tracy and, uh, and, and Zig Ziglar. Uh, I was scheduling Brian Tracy for something and we were talking about Zig. And I was just like, you know, everything that anybody does, whether it be Russell Brunson or me or, or anybody, they're all teaching what Zig, yeah, they, they, they're teaching what Zig, which I've got secrets of closing the sale over there. There you go. Uh, I know Phil's, you know, speaking of affiliate marketing and all that, Phil joined, you know, the masterclass through us. And he's, and I know he's doing awesome with it. Um, it all comes from Zig Ziglar. Yep. Like all of this persuasion stuff, it all comes yep. from Robert Cialdini. Like there, I, there's nobody's taught anything new in years. It's, it's all from, you know, from the basics, but it's a matter of learning the tactics and strategies. And so speaking of tax and stra- tactics and strategies, I, I want to ask you about Facebook lives. I said, I wanted to ask you about that. Um, because this is an important reason to follow Dave, you know, what we're doing today, uh, our Facebook lives, but Dave uses these like a lot and crazy effectively. So guys, make sure again, that you follow him, especially for the next month or so. I know he's probably going to be doing a bunch and if he wasn't, he's not, he is now. Um, <laughs> thanks a lot, Matt. Uh, so you do a lot of Facebook live, like a lot, a lot more than almost anybody I see. How have you used those specifically in affiliate promotions? Great question. So I just actually did a post on my page the other day about this, and I was talking about this book. And I said, listen, Facebook Lives cover all of these things, especially if you do them consistently. So they, with the exception of maybe scarcity. So it covers commitment, consistency, liking. I think liking is the most critical piece in a Facebook Live mm-hmm. because you know that people do business with people they know, like, and trust. And outside of meeting yep. somebody in person, video is the next best way. So video. So you, you're either going to get to love me or hate me. And honestly, I don't care which. I just want the people that love me to stick around so I can continue to add value to them. And, and frankly, I want people to come to a decision that they hate me if they hate me early on so that they're out of the conversation and they don't join my group or whatever. So that's why I like Facebook Live. It's a great filter for both of us. Um, and then, you know, the commitment, consistency, the social proof, the authority. Clearly, if I'm out here talking about something every single day, it gets to a point where like, well, the guy must know what he's talking about because he talks about it every day. Right? And, and I bring in all kinds of relevant citations. I'm like, have you read this? Check out page whatever. If you haven't seen page 23 in this one, you should probably check this out. Right, And I mention all that stuff. So as it gets closer to launch time for an affiliate offer, then yeah, I can, uh, if I have a good relationship with the person that's running the affiliate campaign for the person I'm promoting or the thing I'm promoting, then I have a good look at what their pre-launch content is going to be. I usually ask them what they think their buying objections are going to be. I look at how their bonus stack is and say, okay, their bonus stack is answering a lot of the buying objections. So then I try to do my Facebook lives, like I said, maybe a week to 10 days out. And I start talking about these things very softly, but I start bringing them up and I start trying to put them to rest. Like, hey, I know some of you probably struggle from this. And let me tell you why that's not really a problem because you could do this, that, and whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, And so, yeah, I kind of get the conversation started through Facebook lives a little bit early. And anybody that follows me will tell you, like, that's how they've come to know me and like me and decide to join my Facebook group or buy things based on my recommendation. It's from Facebook Live. So, I, and, and I think if that's a format and you can figure out and you can use, it's actually one of the easiest because all I have to do 
you know, I don't, I don't always do them here in front of this fancy microphone and this fancy camera with this light. A lot of times I pull this thing out of my pocket while I'm sitting in the car waiting to pick up my kids from practice. Yeah. And I go, hey, yo, family, uh, let me tell you something, right? And we'll start having a conversation. So you can do it anywhere. There's no excuse to not do it. Uh, and for me, I've seen anyway, it's, I get the biggest return on my investment for what I do through Facebook Live. Yeah. I mean, that you said something there so powerful. There, There's like no barrier to entry anymore. Zero. I, I just want to point that out to you guys. If you think that uh, I get it 10 years ago, um, I definitely, when I got online in 2002, there's some big barriers to entry. Like I had to learn coding Oof. and uh, I saw front page. Yeah. Uh, uh, what was it? Uh, Macromedia, a dream. Ooh, back flash. Then. Yeah. All that stuff. Yeah. yeah. I mean, we, had, we had to learn stuff like that 17, 18 years ago. Doing video, I mean, meant that you had to find a videographer. I can name the videographer in Southern Pines, North Carolina. You know why? Because there was a videographer in Southern Pines, North Carolina. You, we didn't have options. Like if you wanted like certain things done, you had to go to Raleigh or you had to go to Fayetteville or Charlotte. It was like it was an all day adventure. You had to go to the big city there in North Carolina. Yeah, that's right. We had to grab up the interstate. And I, I, um, I live in Greenville myself, so I'm allowed to say that. Yeah. Wait, you live in Greenville now? I, I did live in Greenville, North oh. Carolina. Yes. <laughs> and and so, um, yeah, actually, we didn't even drive on the interstate because we didn't have one. But, I mean, it was like this thing, right? It's not a thing now. Like Dave said, I mean, it's you have you have more computing power than Clinton had in his entire presidency in, the, in your pocket. Yep. Like, and Clinton was, I mean, he was president a pretty short time ago when we think about it. So, I mean, all that to say, it's just, it's amazing. There is no barrier to entry. And, um, gosh, I just, I just, I just love that. So I want to do a couple rapid fire questions, um, uh, with you, Dave, as we wrap up here. And again, thank you so much, buddy. This has been awesome. You're welcome. Uh, like I'm, I don't know about you, Mark, or you guys, let me know in the comments. Cause I just feel like it has been, <laughs> I was about to say value bombs. And then Phil just goes, wow, value bombs. So it's just been like, if you guys feel like you've been rained on by value bombs, let me know in the comments there. Uh, cause that's how I feel. At least maybe it's just me. And Phil, um, so you've been you've been on some pretty cool affiliate leaderboards. Uh, we promoted a lot of the same things, and um, sometimes you beat me, sometimes I beat you. Usually, we're kind of like right there, you know, yeah. together. Uh, you've won some awesome prizes. I'm just curious, what's your like? What is the coolest affiliate prize for anything for whatever part of the contest it is that you've won? For me, it's all about experiences. I can buy all those things stuff. Yeah. yeah, I can buy stuff for me. There was a contest that Russell Brunson did last year for his 10 X secrets thing. That was going to get you on a yacht on a hundred foot yacht with Russell and his team as they go out to the Bahamas, uh, Bimini and Bahamas, which Bimini thankfully was spared. Um, but uh, yeah, the rest of the Bahamas is not in good shape right now, but we, it was in March. So the opportunity was to win this contest. You're going to run a yacht with Russell Brunson and a bunch of other smart people from quick funnels and the affiliate space be on a yacht so people can't get away from you, right? Even if they wanted to, uh, basically mastermind to the Bahamas, spend a couple days in the Bahamas and come back. And I was like, there is no way in the world that I do not win a spot on that mm. version because like I will do, I will, I will drop everything else I'm doing to get there because of the proximity and because of the minds that will be there, right? Mastermind. So like if, to, to pay your way into a mastermind with those people that were on the boats those days, we had two of them actually, um, it, it would cost you tens of thousands of dollars. So I was like, wait a second, I can make money in the process through the affiliate promotion and then get on these boats and go mastermind with these people? Duh. So that was the biggest one. And then there was also another one that they just had that I, I told Dave Woodward, who's Russell's kind of right-hand man, I said, I'm not going to miss this one either. And we were just at a lake uh, up in Idaho for a couple of days, like four days or something, up in a really nice big house they had there. And it was the same kind of deal. Really smart people, Stephen Larson, a bunch of other folks. Uh, and being able to mastermind and share and get the best practices from all these other people. Because Matt, you, and you'll appreciate this. Like when I go out on a daily basis and have conversations with people, they have no idea what the heck I do. They they just have no clue, yeah. right? And it's hard to even lonely. start. Yeah, yeah. But when you get around these people that are all kind of doing similar things in the online space, your conversations start up here yeah. and they just go higher faster. Yeah. So it's like, wow, we can have these, I literally think I have at least two or three million dollar conversations with these things. So those, mm -hmm. those are the things I like. Yeah, uh, experiences. I mean, Mark knows this. We worked our butt off for me 
to be able to go to Blackberry Farm because yeah, I, I was hoping, yeah. you know, it would be Jeff Walker and Pat Flynn. Pat couldn't make it. Um, and so, and, I mean, you know, we, we downgraded from Pat Flynn to Amy Porterfield, right? right. Yeah. And Michael Hyatt. And, yeah, I mean, I, I joke, I felt like a wiener in a steakhouse. Yep. But, I mean, it, you're right. The conversations were from here to, to, like, this was the starting point. And I got to open up and I got to say things like I normally don't get to say. Like, I, I just don't, like, the oh, my gosh, these conversations were deep. deep. Yeah. Um, so continuing rapid fire, um, we, may, we may have already answered this. Favorite book. doesn't have to be a marketing book. Favorite book. That's a good one. I mean, I, I mentioned Influence a lot and Expert Secrets from Russell Brunson. Those are probably two of my favorite. But I would actually say um, The Magic of Thinking Big by David Schwartz. That, mm. that kind of opened me up to a whole nother world. Like there was something beyond the nine to five experience that the whole world was pushing me to. Like, wait a minute, you can do something different. And that book kind of opened me up to, to the possibilities. Mark has, has that look on his face like he's trying to find the book in a stack of books, but no, no, it's it's out of my office. I don't you have it right now, but I do it? have it. You remember who gave what? that book? No, I had it before. Whatever okay. you're thinking. Oh, okay, you did. Ray Edwards. Ray Edwards gave me my copy. It is sitting. It's third or fourth next book that I'm reading. Um, after some that I'm reading right now, so it's coming up here in the next like three to six weeks. Um, that's awesome. Um, so quick, quick hitter somebody's just starting out they're looking kind of looking for their first affiliate program looking to promote it what's something that you don't hear like you know make sure you do this or you know say this like what what's something that you would tell somebody that's getting started in affiliate marketing that maybe um maybe just maybe nobody else is saying and it doesn't even have to do with maybe making more money or selling more just i don't know something that you would tell somebody starting on affiliate marketing yeah i think you're probably telling people this so it's i'm not gonna say nobody's saying this but i think the 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 easiest, the lowest hanging fruit for people is if you're using tools or technology that have an affiliate program and you like the, that tool or that technology, then join their affiliate program and tell people about it and at least get that thing paid for for you. Like to me, that is the lowest hanging fruit because you're like, I know this thing, I like this thing, you know, whether it's ClickFunnels, Kajabi, what any of them that you're using, Active Campaign, they all have affiliate programs. If you're using that and you like it, tell some people about it, share your affiliate link, and at least share it with enough people to get that thing paid for for you. And then, you know, I teach something called the affiliate ladder. Okay, you get that paid for, then how much more can you make through that one referral? And then you take that money and go buy another tool that you've always wanted to buy, but you couldn't afford or didn't want to buy or whatever. So that would be it. I mean, if you're using something and you like it, tell people about it and get paid in the process. That's what affiliate marketing is. Just like we always talk about. You find a good restaurant, what do you do? Tell people about it. Yeah. Um, favorite superhero? Probably Superman. Yeah? Yeah. I don't know why. It's the tights, isn't it? No, for me, there's actually a story, and I have an extra few minutes. I know I said I got to go 45 minutes, but uh, I can I can tell the story. When I was a little kid, um, I thought I was Superman. I didn't know any better. I went to go see the movie. Um, you know, my dad gives me the little, I was probably like five at the time or six. My dad gives me the speech about, hey, it's just a movie, you know, whatever. Don't try to go do all this stuff. And of course, the first thing I do when I go home is I'm running down the street next to cars, trying to run faster than cars. I'm trying to ride my bike faster than cars. I'm trying to do all these things. I jump off the fence in our backyard to connect and fly all this stuff. But the moment I realized I was actually Superman was that night when I was dirty and my mom put me in the tub and she was off tending to my brothers or something. And I thought, hey, I haven't tried the strength thing yet. And I grabbed the soap dish in the, in the bathroom and I pulled and I pulled and I pulled and I pulled. Finally, wrestled that thing off the wall, and I made a big thud and a splash. And my mom comes in, she's like, "What in the world?" And I'm holding this soap dish over my head like a trophy, like, "Yes!" <laughs> she is like, "What in the world?" And that day, I realized I was Superman. So that's why Superman is my favorite superhero. That, that is awesome. awesome. That yeah. is so awesome. Yeah, that was the short and condensed version. I can usually tell it over ten minutes, but yeah. So, Dave, sell me this pen. Just kidding. <laughs> Just kidding. Yeah, man, Dave, thank you so much. Guys, this has been awesome. Here's what I want you to do, okay? Dave gave you a bunch of little mini playbooks today. Uh, I'll just tell you outright, if you don't execute on what he shared today, uh, there was no value. You know, the value will come from your execution. The value will come from the stories that you're sharing with Dave on his Facebook page. Remember what he said, 
the, the, the value will come when you're telling Dave three months from now, hey, you shared that on this Facebook Live you did with Matt, and here's the result that I got. It'll come from the transformation. You know, uh, that's where the value is going to come from. So real quick, my call to action to you is if you missed anything, go back. The replay will be live shortly on Facebook. Watch the replay. If you know somebody, if, you, if you've got somebody who's like Patrick, maybe they think they're too old or they're too late, share this with them. Share this message with them. Share this with anybody that you think could have, uh, could get value from this, that you want to see transformation in them. But most importantly, go back and watch it, get the finer points and start executing. I don't care if you watch it and press pause seven minutes in, go execute for a month, then come back and watch the rest, whatever you got to do. Also, make sure you come and join us at our Passion to Profit uh, path coming up. We've got another presentation coming up here next week, I think. You can get that at passiontoprofitpath.com, passiontoprofitpath.com. And remember, our next Facebook Live, we've got another amazing guest, Mike Berry. We're going to be live from just down I-69 in uh, Indianapolis. That's next Tuesday. We're not sure what time yet. So if you want to know the time, make sure to go to mattmcwilliams.com forward slash FB chat, and we will ping you and let you know when we're live. Dave, man, this has been, um, I, don't, I, I, I can't insult past guests. Yes, I can. This has been my favorite <laughs> Facebook Live ever that we have done. Like dead oh, it's, it's just like so much value. So thank you guys. Again, remember, go check him out. Watch his Facebook page. Google his name, follow him, sign up for his email list, uh, engage with him, and um, who knows? Maybe he'll be telling us a story a year from now or two years from now about how he promoted you and uh, and won an even cooler trip than the one to the Bahamas. We'll see. So, Dave, thank you again, buddy. Thank you guys for Thanks, joining Matt, us. Matt, Mark, appreciate it. Thanks for listening to Unleash the Awesome. Please be sure to subscribe, rate, and review wherever you listen to your podcasts. And please share us on your favorite social media platforms using hashtag UnleashAwesome.